our next segment. What does a simple pair of eyeglasses have to do with cheating the casinos? We'll find out when Las Vegas Cheaters Beware continues. You're watching Vegas Week on the Travel Channel. Channel in Las Vegas, Nevada, also known as Sin City. But what's so sinful about Sin City? Mind out of the gutter, Teller. It's called Sin City because where else can get chocolate cake and barbecue ribs 24 hours a day and a mountain of shrimp? Gluttony, my favorite sin. There have been games of chance and games of skill for thousands of years. And of course, the object of any game is to win. The same holds true in Las Vegas casinos. Some people rely on pure luck to win. Others study the games and devise strategies to beat the casinos legally. But many people try to win by simply cheating. Casino cheating is pretty prevalent, but we, we arrest about 600 people a year for cheating. Statistically, that may not be that many, but for Nevada, we feel it's, it's pretty substantial. Blackjack is one of the most popular games in the casino. The object is to beat the dealer's hand by getting your cards to total as close to 21 without going over. Obviously, if you were to know the next card to be dealt, blackjack becomes a much easier game to win. And that brings us to our next scam, which has to do with marking cards. You know, there are several ways cheaters will attempt to mark cards. Sometimes in play, sometimes out of play. And they run the full gamut of, from the very simple, which is bending a card in play, or putting a thumbnail on the card. Cheaters have been known to put a device under their thumb or file their thumbnail down to a razor edge or put a device that has a cutting edge on it to mark or scratch the back of the card. They've also been known to use a uh, piece of sandpaper glued to the side of the finger and they would scrape the edge off a card or scrape the ink off the back. Bending cards in the act of asking for a hit. Instead of asking for a hit like this, I ask this way and I actually bend the card while I'm asking for a hit. Players bend the cards all the time. The way they the way they look at them, they bend them, they slide them real slow. They might make an intentional tear on the corner. The player is not to bend the cards or to crease them in any manner. Some players do that so that they can indicate a face card, the face value of a card, or eight, seven eights and nines. When they receive a seven, eight, or nine, that way they know whether they can beat the dealer. One other form of marking uh, is called dobbing. Now, dobbing could be anything from women's makeup. It could be a container filled with a substance, and you have it hidden on your body, and you continually go to that, to that uh, container to get the dob on your hand, transfer the dob to the playing card, mark it in different areas for different values. One of the clever ways the bad guys have come up with marking playing cards is a dob that starts off in a spray can and you spray it on a brush, brush your hair with the daub, and now the daub's in your hair. During the act of play, I would reach up and touch my hair as if I'm thinking, just reach up and scratch your head and transfer the daub to my fingers, then transfer that to the card. They go through this card marking procedure for maybe two or three deals and then, and then have sufficient amount of uh, cards out there marked to be able to to take advantage of it. Car marking in blackjack is still common. Now it is a harder crime to detect, basically because the person, these daubers, we call them daubers, what they use is a very special kind of ink. And most persons that use this ink usually wear glasses, which sometimes is a giveaway because they can actually see the ink better that way. These glasses, when I put these glasses on, I can't see up close. I can't see at any great distance. The glasses are specially made to focus 10% bigger at three and a half feet. Three and a half feet, that's the distance from the customer to the dealer's hand. You mark the card with a special chemical. Look at the back of the card with the naked eye and you can't see anything. Look at it with these glasses and the card appears bigger and because of the rose color, you can see this mark. Let's go into the casino and see how this scam might look. 
The first thing to happen is that several hands must be played so the cards can be marked. Here's our card marker doing a move that he hopes won't be noticed. But he's not so lucky this time. You see in here now is he's taking the residue off his hair and rubbing it on the high card. If you look at the other shot, you can see he's marking the high denomination card and moving the smaller card underneath it out of the way. Because the card marker doesn't wish to get caught with the evidence on him, he leaves once the cards have been marked. Then the big better takes over to reap the benefits of the marked deck. But the big better doesn't wish to draw attention by wearing colored glasses, so he will use a person to read the marked cards. Recognize those glasses? The reader positions herself to see the back of the cards as the dealer deals. Now, all she has to do is read the marks on the cards and let the big better know which card is coming next. How do they do it? Through a series of coded signals. Now, if the reader starts acting like a third base coach or a traffic cop, of course, it's going to be kind of obvious. So they're going to use a very simple signal. In this case, they're chips. You'll notice that as she handles high-value chips, she's telling the big player that the next card is a high-value card. What if she handled low-value chips? She's telling the big player that the next card is a low-value card. Suppose the most valuable card in the game, the ace, were coming up. She would touch a valuable piece of jewelry, spin her ring in this case. Let's suppose she doesn't know the card. It's not marked. She couldn't see it. The dealer held the cards too close. She has to tell the big player, I don't know the card. She has to tell him quickly. What does she do? A signal crosses her fingers in this case. Okay, now that you know what to look for, let's go back to the casino. So to the untrained eye, it looks like a typical blackjack game. People having fun, and a big better is having a great game. He's winning some big hands. It appears that marking cards and using a reader in this way is a foolproof method of taking the casino for big bucks. But, like all scams, the well-trained casino staff knows what to look for. The biggest tip-off is the manner in which the big better is winning. He's going against all basic strategy, but he still continues to get the cards he needs to win. He's either incredibly lucky, psychic, or cheating. A tip off to the dealer is, for instance, if I'm dealt off cards out, I have a 10 up. I know the dealer. I know the player has a 12. The player stays. If the guy at the other end of the table who has the 16, then he's going to hit. If he catches the four, and I end up busting, and it kind of makes you think that there's a team thing going on. Well, we're aware that there are teams out there, you know, and they're known to us, but uh, the sophisticated teams, they'll just use different players, like, every month. Like, so it's more or less you have to stay on your toes. If you get hit with a team, believe me, it's not going to be one that, that, that was ID'd three days ago in another casino. They're not going to use the same people again. You know, they'll just switch it around. But there's one thing that the casinos and authorities can usually count on when it comes to cheaters. Cheaters in um, say Nevada, from my experience, are greedy. Um, some get away with it a couple times and they continue to stay on the game. However, though, some of the smarter cheaters that have been around for a little longer will, once they notice the pit boss start to come around a little bit more, or another dealer is a little bit more strict as far as their movements and so forth, and not to cause too much attention to them, they'll reduce the wager, continue to take the losses, and then maybe excuse themselves from the table. But don't kid yourself. Eventually, the cheat will make that one mistake that won't go unnoticed. Unless every move is pulled off flawlessly each and every time, there will inevitably be that time when those watching see something that doesn't look quite right. And if there's anything that can be said about the casinos, it's that someone is always watching. But anything they do, we're going to see it eventually. We might not catch them the very time they're doing it, but as soon as we rewind the tape, we're going to see it. When we come back, I'm going to show you a cheating technique that I call the death grip and the fish hook. This is a tip off to surveillance that someone's palming a card or holding out a card. That's the way an amateur might do it. A professional, on the other hand, might do it like this.
Brian Teller, and you're watching the Travel Channel. Vegas casinos spend millions of dollars protecting their games of chance from con men, cheats, and ripoff artists. They use a combination of electronic surveillance equipment, well-trained dealers, and an alert gaming staff. And being alert means knowing that each game offers a cheat, a unique opportunity to break the rules. You'll see what we mean with our next scam that involves a card game called Pi Gow Poker. Pi Gow is a very popular casino game. It's a poker-based game. Anybody who plays poker at home can learn to play Pi Gow poker in a casino. You're dealt seven cards. You make two hands, a five-card hand and a two-card hand. In order to win, you have to beat the dealer on both the high hand and low hand. To lose, you have to lose both. Otherwise, it's a tie. Because the customers can touch the cards, it's a perfect opportunity for hand-mucking, switching cards in play. So remember the fish hook and the death grip. On the game Pi Gal, what makes it attractive for some people to try to switch cards is the table layout itself is wider and longer. So they think it's harder for the dealer to watch. And what they're hoping the dealer won't be able to see is when they palm the cards to make a switch with their partner to improve their hand. Here's a typical game. The couple at the end look like they've played the game before, but there's a beginner who's asking the dealer a lot of questions. Nothing out of the ordinary. The dealers are usually happy to help you understand the basic strategy of the game. But what's really happening here is something nearly every casino cheat counts on, a distraction to pull the dealer's attention away from them. When someone's trying to distract me, you can definitely tell. Either their girlfriend starts screaming real loud because she finally got a blackjack or a 20. Oh, I finally got a good hand. Someone will dump a drink on the table. Doubling down on pot hand. Doubling down on a 12. I mean, that's very rarely done. There are a few people that do it here and there. And, but it's not seen. You know, so you're, they're trying to draw your attention here away from whatever's going on the other side of the game. In some cases, the distraction can be very simple. Spilling a glass. In some cases, very blatant, very open. I've seen women on a game open their blouse. Sometimes it's not that much fun. But a simple distraction can be the key to a successful casino scam. So, to the untrained eye, it may look like these Pi Gow players are simply having a good time playing a card game in a casino. But up in surveillance, they're looking for certain movements that may tip them off that a scam may be happening. We're looking for their mannerisms, hand movements with the cards. The cards can't leave the table. Uh, you know, and if a card does go down, we always get a call from the pit. Say, listen, card went down on Pi Gal 7 or whatever. You know, the, the guys want to run back the tape and take a look at it to make sure the right card came back. Let's go back to George Joseph with our student dealers and find out how this Pi Gal scam is practiced by cheaters. These two players were hand-mucking, switching cards in play. They were taking the weakest card from the strongest hand and the strongest card from the weakest hand, and under the table, they switch cards. They're always protecting the biggest bet, big bet, little bet. By this time, the blocker has stepped between them to stop anyone from behind seeing the hand-muck take place. But guess who really makes the hand muck work? That pretty girl sitting right there, she is the stall. She shows the dealer her cards, asks how do I play, pretends not to know how to play the hand. While his attention is drawn to that pretty girl and her cards, that's when the switch happens. What they'll do, they'll look at their cards and then based upon what they have in their hand, will then switch two or three of their cards to give them a better opportunity to win the progressive jackpot that's on the table or just to win their hand. The other ways of cheating pie gals, just like the other table games, capping bets, pinching bets, 
moving bets from one area to another. Usually the dealer is going to catch on to that. It's a little bit more complicated game to deal, so your better dealers are dealing it, and they usually got the experience to see every move on that game. And here's an interesting fact. Despite experienced, watchful dealers and knowing that the casino is filled with sophisticated surveillance equipment, some players still try to cheat the games. People will cheat in, the, in front of the video cameras, in front of people, because they think they've developed a good enough method to not get caught. And uh, it's a challenge to people sometimes. So people will go ahead and cheat knowing they're on, on uh, tape. But if you're going to cheat in Las Vegas, you must be prepared for the inevitable. When we come back, we're going to show you a classic casino cheating scam. It involves a wheelchair, a powerful electromagnet, two blockers, two betters, a distractor, a pretty girl, a pair of loaded dice, and a dice switch. Sounds easy, huh? Come on, Seven. for the Travel Channel here at the Rio All Suite Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada, one of the largest hotels in the world. In fact, 18 of the 20 biggest hotels in the world are right here in these 84 square miles of Las Vegas, Nevada. Over 125,000 rooms. That means to spend the night in each and every room, it would take Tom Jones 343 years, 4 months, and 25 days. It would take Teller half that time. Millions of dollars in play in Las Vegas every day. It's just human nature for some people to use deception to try to tip the odds in their favor. They study the games, they practice at home, they think through every move in advance. They're cheats. And once they've found the slightest flaw in the games or the casino's procedures, they will strike quickly to exploit it for a quick gain at the casino's expense. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's all game protection. It all starts with the breaking procedures. The act of theft, the cheat, is all, it always starts with the break of procedures, either by the player or the dealer. One thing the casinos do is they require the dealers to deal in the same method, using the same procedures, so everything is consistent. So when anyone is watching the game, they look for some sort of difference or some sort of change in, in, in method. And when that's spotted, then they figure either something could be going on at that time. And with the casino's strict rules and procedures in place, the cheats have to craft more elaborate and deceptive scams. That brings us to a classic crap scam involving a well-choreographed and well-rehearsed cast of cheats, a wheelchair, an electromagnet, and a pair of magnetic dice. If you've ever been in a casino, you know that one place where the action is fast and furious is at the craps table. But it's also the one game where you have the most people watching all that action. In order for a cheat to happen, some perfectly timed choreography would be needed. As you can see, this game looks pretty normal. You probably didn't notice anything out of the ordinary that would indicate that cheating was happening. But let's go back to casino cheating expert George Joseph and see how this scam is put together. It starts with the dice. The key to any loaded dice scam is to drill down a little deeper into the empty spots, add a little paint, and then add a slug, heavy metal. Put that metal inside on certain spots, which makes the load go to the bottom and the number come to the top. In the magnetic dice scam, instead of adding heavy metal, we're adding magnetic slugs. They'll be attracted to a magnet. Using two different colored pairs of dice, here's a close-up of how the cheats will get the loaded dice into the game. Remember, just getting caught with a pair of loaded dice in your possession in a Las Vegas casino can cause you a lot of trouble. If you had loaded dice on in your possession or any type of cheating device in your possession, it's a felony in the state of Nevada without even using it. Once the dice is used, it's just a continuation of the cheating and the violation of the laws. The next element in this scam is an electromagnet. In the old days for private games, you could wear a vest magnet hidden under your clothes. In the casino, they used a powerful electromagnet. But how did they get the magnet into the game? Here was the clever part. 
they built the magnet into an electric wheelchair. The batteries from the wheelchair powered up the magnet, the electromagnet. Watch what happens when the magnetic dice come in contact with the electromagnet when it's turned on. Okay, they had a powerful electromagnet built into a wheelchair. They switched magnetic dice into the game. This team is ready to take on the casino, right? Wrong. The last and possibly most important element to this scam is the coordination necessary among all members of the cheating team as the dice are rolled. Just as the shooter picks up the dice, the late better throws a bet in that's over the limit. It's intended to make the box person turn. Just as the shooter taps the dice, that's the signal for the blocker to block the dealer's sight. Just as the dice land, it's the signal for the girl in the chair to turn on the magnet and flip the dice over. When it's perfectly timed, it's a big payday for the cheaters. It's a big loss for the casino. Here's what it looks like again in the casino. The big better is ready to go. Our wheelchair lady is in place with her foot on the switch. The shooter knows where she has to put the dice to make sure the magnetic field will be in effect. And the assistant helping the lady in the wheelchair knows exactly when to lean into place the bet. And that's a nice payoff for our cheats. But if this had been an actual scam, how would the three dealers and the boxmen have reacted? Well, their responsibility is, is game protection, uh, you know, to book the bets, but, uh, you know, each, each dealer and the box person have, have, they have their own area of the, of the crap table to look at, and uh, they, they can't take their eyes off of a certain area. Stick Parson never lets his eyes off the door, never loses a sight of the dice, never. That's his job. What they do is together they're supposed to work to watch the table because it's a lot of fast action. There's a lot of people calling bets, uh, making it very rapidly. And they're also supposed to watch the dice to make sure that the dice are being rolled properly, that the, the dice are not being scooted or slid across the floor or they're not loaded dice. And of course, with someone carefully watching the dice, the little telltale flip from the effect of the magnet would have ended this team's gambling adventure rather quickly. Just like in all of the games, there's always someone watching the action and looking out for cheaters. And they always forget about that. They think they're only dealing with one component. And I think that's what some cheaters don't realize, that there's not just the dealer you're dealing with. You're dealing with the whole casino and you're dealing with the pit boss, you're also dealing with surveillance, and you don't know who's sitting at the table. It might be a gaming control board agent sitting right next to you. You just never know. Next up, we'll bring you an expert who says that it's not only the casinos that are being ripped off. To a cheater, the casino industry and the casino patron are the same thing. They don't make a distinction between the casino and the player. Only on the Travel Channel. We're Penn and Teller, and you're watching the Travel Channel. Las Vegas probably has more security cameras than any other public place on Earth. Because all of the casinos are equipped with numerous high-tech video surveillance systems, many visitors feel safer than perhaps they should. But we all must realize that crooks don't just steal from the casinos. We need to pay close attention to our money and possessions whenever we're in a casino. You can't assume that someone else is going to be watching over you, even though they're attempting to. You're an adult, and you must take an active part in protecting yourself. Not surprisingly, cheats will take advantage of any situation that will let them get rich quick. It could be the result of a momentary breach in casino procedures or the execution of a well-practiced sleight of hand at the expense of a patron. It's one thing to lose to the one-armed bandits. It's quite another thing to be ripped off by the two-legged ones. People go to casinos to have a good time. They're not thinking in terms of crime. And the casino 
criminals are aware of that. You're there to have a good time, they're there to take your money and rip you off. When we get a call, somebody had a coin cup stolen from them, or they're missing chips off a game, we take that very, very, very seriously because they're coming after our patrons now. You know, it's not just us. When they come after our patrons, we take that to heart. For those of you planning a trip to a casino, Frank Scabletti has put together some common sense things you should do to protect yourself from casino ripoff artists. Anytime you're in a casino and somebody bumps you, you have to train yourself to move your hand to your money. So if someone bumps you, hand to shirt, hand to wallet, hand on purse. Most men keep their wallets in their back pockets. It's a very easy place for a pickpocket to take it. What you want to do is you want to put your money in a shirt pocket so that if somebody is going to attempt to take money from you, they have to be facing you and they literally have to rip it right off you. All right, women, the worst place to put your purse is by your side when you're playing a slot machine. You're inviting somebody to distract you on one side while an accomplice comes on the other side and takes the purse. Keep your purse on your lap, preferably wrapped somewhat around your arm so that a person looking to steal it realizes that they're going to have to really yank it and they don't want to draw attention to themselves. Don't keep anything valuable in your room unless they have a safe, then use the safe. It's always wise if you're carrying cash to only have the amount of money that you're going to use during that particular playing session on you. And preferably it should be in, in your shirt pocket or in a pair of pants pocket that you keep your hand in until you hand in the money. Otherwise, put everything in the, in the safe deposit box. The little bit of effort it takes to go to the safe deposit box, take out your jewelry for the evening, or to take out your money to play is well worth it. You don't want to leave your money in your room, and you don't want to be carrying a lot of money on your person. Las Vegas is known as Sin City. However, many men think that when they're sitting at a slot machine or when they're playing a table game or when they're sitting at a bar, if a beautiful woman comes up to them and starts to tell them how witty they are, how attractive they are, how irresistible they are, these poor guys fall for it. And then they're charged incredible amounts of money to be with that woman. You're not irresistible. If some woman comes up to you and says, I know you're witty, I know you're so handsome, I know you're terrific, She's either a hooker or a crook, or both. If you're playing a slot machine, one of the biggest slot scams is for a team to work a player. They'll just walk into a slot area, they'll look at a person usually by themselves, they'll never go near a group, looking for a person that's playing. Drinking doesn't make a difference if they're drinking or not. And then they'll do a, a drop and snatch type thing where they'll, they'll drop like a couple of coins, say, oh, you dropped your money, and the person will bend over. Then they'll have another person take the cup and walk away, usually a two-person team. Some of them do it by themselves, you know. It's more or less what you're looking at is just people taking advantage of the situation. The way to protect yourself is simple. Somebody drops coins, you don't see them drop them. They go, oh, excuse me, ma'am, there are some coins on the floor. You just turn around and say, would you pick them up for me, please? I have a bad back. Most of today's slot machines are really sophisticated. However, some of the older machines that do take bills don't always work right. They will reject the bill. Astute criminals will scope out a casino and know which machines have a tendency to reject the hundreds or the twenties. And what they will do is this. They'll have one person come and distract you just as you put your money in to get your credits. You'll talk to that person. You'll go back to start play. Find that you don't have any credits. The machine has rejected your bill and the accomplice on this side took the bill and ran. If you win big at a slot machine, a big jackpot, if you win big at a table game, never hesitate to ask the casino to provide security to walk you to the casino cage, to walk you to your room or to your car, because a big win will attract not only people who are applauding your good luck, but people who would like to take some of that good luck for themselves. So 
always ask security if you, if you have a big win to escort you wherever you're going. When you're playing table games, you should take a leaf from the casino notebook. If you take a look at the way they organize their trays, they have the higher denomination chips right in the middle and then spreading out lower and lower denominations until finally you have a coinage. Why do they do that? So that if a thief comes, he has to reach right across the whole table to get at the big denomination chips. They're protecting themselves with the little chips. At a blackjack table, put your high denomination chips on the bottom, your low denomination chips on top of them. So again, if somebody's going to try to snipe a chip, they can only snipe the little chips on top. It's very, very hard to snipe from the bottom of a pile. A lot of times on craps, the most common thing we have is a patron trying to steal from another patron on the rail. They call them rail birds. They're almost always caught. They might get away with it once or twice, but once we rewind the tape and see who they are, for some reason these people always come back. They'll keep doing it until they get caught, and ultimately, they do get caught. The perfect crimes may have been committed. The person who does that one-time crime, never hear from them again, fine. That's like the player who comes to Las Vegas once, wins, never plays again. He's beaten the system. But for most cheaters, most criminals, they will do it over and over and over until they're caught. We've all heard the stories of people cheating the casinos, but the stories take on new meanings when we hear about con men who are trying to steal from us. And just as the casinos protect themselves, we must learn to protect ourselves. That's sometimes difficult to remember with all the money that's being flashed around in a Las Vegas casino. It's doubly tough when you consider it's one of the friendliest and most service-oriented travel destinations the world has ever known but we shouldn't be lulled into letting our guards down. We all dream of going to Las Vegas and winning a small fortune. But remember to bring a little common sense along with your gambling money. That way, you'll be sure to return home with your good fortune and good memories safely tucked away. And for those daring crooks dumb enough to try to outsmart the casinos, we simply say, cheaters beware. Week continues next. Only